Mailbag preview show episode 296, joined by three of the four people that made it to Adelaide. Hey, yeah. what, what happened? Yeah. It was uh, a double double booking with the Melbourne Food and, Food and Wine Festival. Um, so, yes, that was that was my my uh, my fault was not being able to plan my own calendar. But um, yeah, there's some some good good food was eaten and uh, and plenty of booze as well. And that was just you guys in Adelaide. Mm. <laughs> uh, Finally, scary. Uh, we we were up. at the Adelaide Fringe Festival, weren't we, Rob? We were just soaking up culture. There yeah. we were. Um, <laughs> good night. Sounds very lardy da there, Pete. Oh, you saying I would have fit in, or I wouldn't have fit in? No, no. I'm just saying your weekend just sounds, you know, very, very highbrow. You know, with yeah. the, the food and the wine and yeah. I got to eat stuff. tripe. I got to eat tripe. It was the best tripe I've ever had. Um, what is tripe? Yeah. It's uh, stomach lining. So uh, oh. I can highly recommend a well prepared tripe uh, for anyone who hasn't tried it, which is. Apparently, only about ten percent of people were actually offering to have that little side dish on a menu. But yeah, now fill me up. Were, were, there, any, else, yeah. were there any Red Bull vodkas available in, in Melbourne? It's very <laughs> hard to find in Adelaide. For one, so did that? Did it have like a local alternative? No, Are mate, they a monster mate, monster it state? Was, it was a, like a working holiday, so <laughs> and I'm I'm tired as a rule, and I, I'm clean living now, so. Um, mm. I was very tired. Um, I said, I said, Rob, Jono, let's go back to the bay, like Glenelg, and just have dinner in there. It's halfway home where we're staying, and Rob was just so so horny to get into town, and Jono was keen. He goes, "It's just on the tram from Morphville, two stops." <laughs> so I'm like, "Righto, whatever, guys." Forty stops later, we get <laughs> off and commence a. What I would call a 4K walk from one side of tiny Adelaide City CBD to the other. Um, at which point I, I felt a tantrum brewing, and I know how to handle that sort of stuff, which is to you know get an upper and <laughs> and have a settler of a beer. So I walk into this pub. I say, "Mate, have you got Red Bull vodka, please? Can I have a, can I have a Red Bull vodka, please?" He said, "Nah, we don't have any Red Bull." I was like, "Well, just a vodka with that whatever energy drink, energy drink you have." I said, nah, we don't have any energy drinks. <laughs> I said, fuck. Right, well, can I get a beer, please? That, like, uh, it was a stone of wood. I said, nah, we're out of that too. <laughs> At that point, I did throw all the toys out of the cot and we left. Yeah, and, and then the storm, storm down the uh, storm down the street. Rob, Rob's almost had to get into a fight for you. <laughs> Turn it up. Uh, he, was, he was bumping into people. I heard someone say, <laughs> ew, fuck it in the bucket hat. <laughs> uh, I was like, Ooh. We'll, we'll, anyway we'll get into the racing speaking of morfittville race course very very nice spot i thought i mean i'm probably comparing it to most of the new zealand race courses but i thought it was i thought it was very nice i would con- compare it peter to a modern day sand down oh like a, like a, a renovated sand down it was quite nice you got real close to everything good <laughs> facilities I've I've got one major issue with it. I loved it. I loved the track there, but they've got Sky One over the PA all day, and I left my headphones at home. Um, so after my three sort of head to half head beats, by the end of that, I was um I, I was kind of seething on that. Oh. So yeah, you just, just need someone with a mute button. There's that much money in the racing industry. Just someone with the mute button, so we don't get a Harvey Norman ad over the PA. Come on, lift. The other thing that happened, Peter, um, <laughs> was. Rob was in a bit of a hole mentally and financially. I said, man, I don't know why, but I think the six is going to win the next. I hadn't looked at anything. I didn't yeah. watch him in the yard. I said, I'm telling you six. And he ignored me. And we went out and watched it. John and I had a good bet at the six, real victim areas. It got one of the greatest bobs in of all time <laughs> to win. And set Rob Mel off mentally again. Luckily, our Adelaide Mountain Yard mailman, um, his name I've just forgotten. Damo. Damo showed up and um, had the medicine that Rob required. But um, yeah, it was a it was a roller coaster of emotions for uh, the youngest, oldest looking, the oldest, youngest looking man in racing, Roberto Scar's dog. 
it was yeah, it was it was pretty pretty rough and in the last to just to imbibe. Uh she could have got us all out, you know, set me off on the you know. Anyway, we're moving on. Rose Hill, one of the best Saturday meetings um of the year in Sydney. Um and we should get a, a reasonable track because we've had rain. So let's hope they don't water it any more like last week or whatever. We should get a good track. Yep. All right, and we'll kick off with the Group 1 Rose Hill Guineas, race 6, 2,000 metres for three-year-olds. <clears throat> Riff Rocket, no, yes. Tom Kitten and Riff Rocket fighting out favouritism at the moment. And you see Riff Rocket was defeated there in the Australian Guineas. Uh, prior to that was very impressive. First up in the sack, CS Hayes. Tom Kitten... Been screaming out for the trip. Rob, uh, initial thoughts? Gets uh, Hugh Bowman aboard, Tom Kitten. Well, that, that's interesting. Nash off, um, who's been closely associated with the horse. Guess comes down to, um, you know, race shape a little bit. He does get a long way back. I expect um, Riff Rocket to be in front of him in the run, um, who's now got Nash, which is interesting. Um Cafe Millennium was one of those situations where I was like, no, nah, this can't win. And the other week, and it almost did, um, mm-hmm. almost beat Militarize. Um, and the the good horse, which I think will be off to, to Hong Kong, the legend horse, the grey, um, Celestial Legend. Because, um, yeah, he's not here. So I, I, I'm not sure. Um, I could, I'm Tom Kitten prayed it better, ran better. Not sure how strong that form is. Um, this might be one of the rare cases where the Melbourne three-year-olds might be just, just might be better. Um, I guess Riff Rockets both both sort of stables. Uh, you know, could be Melbourne, could be Sydney, but slight lean that way. Cafe Millennium can parade better, but I'm just not sure about him at two thousand meters. King Colorado, um, hard to you know, he's a horse that gets back, but yeah, look. If, Probably at four or five chances. It falls away pretty quickly after that. Um, Say Wolf is looking for the 2,000 metres, but, um, yeah, it gets a sort of a tricky. It'll need all of Blake's shin skill. Um, so after all that, not much to <laughs> can't yeah. too much. In terms of rider there for Riff Rocket, it looks like J-Mac was booked for militarised, but they're heading to the uh, George Rider instead. Um, so I assume he would have been on Riff Rocket had that not been the case. Um, Celestial Legend, I think they're looking at the Doncaster uh, for him, I believe, if I'm not every, every Every chance, but you, you, you'd think, I know poor old um, Les will be crying, but it's going to go to Hong Kong, surely, for the four-year-old derby season. You know, it's not the first time that Bon Ho's done that with these legend, these legend horses. Um, but, yeah, I, I'd be tipping that. Um, yeah. Yeah. Jack, what did what did you make of Riff Rocket and uh, King Colorado as well out of the Australian Guineas? I think Riff Rocket's going better than King Colorado, but I think the SPs and now the prices that are, they're offering you, uh, King Colorado's the bet if you like one of the two. I think you know, it's the biggest price it's been all preparation and it's been in really good races in Melbourne. Mm. Um, Mark Zara sticks, blinkers off. Barrier three. This horse has been crucified by barriers and maps. Its first two, its last two starts this prep. Uh, it's fourth up. Yeah, I, I think he profiles like an improvement's going to come here. Um, Blinkers off, grace me up, but Kieran's, you know, a. Uh, uh, a horseman, and you've got to sort of trust that they know what they're doing, and, and there's no doubt they're trying to peak the horse to, to, to pick up that group one. He's a cult by Kingman, so he's going to be worth a fair bit of money probably already, and if he can get a big win here in Sydney, um, his, his value is going to go up through the roof. Um, yeah, that's how I see it. Uh, Pete, anything to add on that one? Not really. I mean, look... We haven't even discussed how the track's going to play for a start, which, uh, given Sydney's recent record, more than likely will involve a bias of some kind. Um, 
your two primary chances in the market, Riff Rocket and Tom Kitten, both in the wrong spot on the track last start. So both genuine excuses. But who, who knows? Narrative. Yeah. All right. You're leaning though to rails and run. Oh, I would be. Look, I, in terms of what I've seen from those two primary chances, I would prefer to be with Riff Rocket. But I just. Yeah, what, but what's the, Tom what's the map? Drawn yeah. two and Riff yeah. Rocket's drawn seven. So, yeah. It's tough, but, isn't it? Yeah, you, you want to see it before you jump into anything. You know, you, you're going to have five races on the card to work out how the track's playing, and you know, then you just have to assess: Are you still getting a price late if the track is leaning one way or the other? So, yeah, look, I, I would say if anything, rails and run, you would expect to be some level of advantage. It just depends on what the inside, how soggy it is, all that sort of thing. We've had a few tracks over the last month or so where. That's been a prediction, and the inside's been cast after race one or two. It's a step up for this immediacy, but mm. I think it's got good ability and probably going to be better in two or three weeks' time, whenever it is in the derby. Mm. It definitely looks like it's looking for. It. I mean, it's one three from three, but further the better, you would assume. Um, all right, perfect. It's a, a pretty wide open Rose Hill Guineas. We'll move on to the Group 1, George Ryder, 1,500 metres. Rob, think about it. He was massive first up. Uh, draws 17 here. Mm. Look, um, there. Bit of ru- Does Joe scratch? Mm. It, well, it's a bit of a rumour. Um, well, not a rumour, but, you know, old mate Gary who's in the ownership just, just informed me that the horse has maybe got a little bit of a cough or something. So he, I'd say there's a decent doubt over him taking his place. Um, so, look, it, this looks like one of the weakest... Sounds weak- like he's just walking around the stables and he's like, oh, what? Did he just cough? <laughs> well, look, they do want to run here because they reckon they've got a great weight in the um, Doncaster with 57. So it is an important lead up to that race. So, but yeah, we'll, we'll find out the next day or two. But yeah, I'd, I'd be suggesting, I'd be tipping that he won't be running. Um then, you know, the riders traditionally like a small field of weight for age horses. This looks far from that to me. Um, look, I missed, uh, shout out Butch, uh, Democracy Manifest. We're on that first up with Kovalika and they both ran well. Uh, Democracy Manifest ran huge to win last week. I know Kovalika's got um, no, so he's got a tricky gate here, drawing the car park, but he's going to get back anyway. Um I think he's one of the more uh, well, better credentialed horses, along with Pericles, uh, who was a bit disappointing the other day, but that was a sort of a funny, funny race. It's out of weight for age, which is probably the right form. Um, after that, you know, Lady Laguna, she's been up forever, but she's racing very well. And, you know, I'm going to pour cold water on Militarise. Um, as I always do, he had every possible last start. Thank God I didn't tip it. Um, because you know how much I don't love the horse. Um, but he seems to be drawn well. It would make me sick if he won this and was a two time group one winning stallion and off to study went as a sort of mark two autumn sun overrated horse. Um, in pap, um, yeah, he's about as good as militarizing, you're getting twice the price. Hasn't yeah. softened at all, hasn't softened him at all. The trip to Adelaide, has it? No, yeah. The uh, the race in New South Wales stewards have posted about think about it. He had a slightly elevated white blood cell count, but was scoped and was clear. Um, and we'll have repeat blood tests uh, to see whether he starts. Um, what do you make of Amenable, you Victorian boys? He obviously looked uh, a very good bet there. First up at Flemington, just knocked off by Von Hawk. Second up last time, not far off Mr. Brightside and Co. Alligator Blood, I wish I win, etc. The best of the best. Can he improve from a good draw for Mark Zara? Short answer, yes. Um, but, you know, how to what level is he going to? improve i think that's the big question he's obviously that's his best first up performance that he's posted so far so you can make an argument that he's improved a couple of lengths maybe at most coming into this preparation but 
I don't know. It just I thought he had every chance there first up in slow tempo, right lanes on the day, and and got knocked off late. Uh, I'd be happy to just pass, but it's a pretty tough race. If the favourite comes out, it sort of takes a lot of the interest out of it for me because at the moment you're getting maybe odds on one or two runners that just draw better and have the you know the excuse last start and can improve. So yeah, it's not really one of the horses I was looking to. You got seventeen bucks, so you don't really have to have yeah. a lot on to <clears throat> have a go. But Jack, any thoughts here? I thought it's a, a nice chance here inside. Never seen Sydney was really good and well backed first up, gelded. Um, it's, I think it's going to run a good race. I think the form's really strong around him. Um, I think the same about Pericles. Um, he was held up last start. Um, so you sort of forgive that. Prior, he's, you know, 1.5 lengths off Mr. Brightside, who would be $2 here. I think Pericles is a really big price. Um, drawn tricky, but big Hughes back. And um, so, yeah, Pericles, amenable. And the other horse that interests, interests me a little bit um, right down the bottom is V8. Um, you notice D Lane's gone with it over the other one. Um, blinkers again. Um, Four dollars eighty versus the Rift Rockets and the Southport Tycoons. You'll get a really good read on that race from the, the race that's just gone, Rob, as to what that form's like. A start prior, six dollars versus Mr. Brightside, beating one point three. So, I think they're the three sort of at odds options. Um, they're all double figures or, or a fair bit bigger, and hopefully that favourite stays in and hopefully they'll get past 20 to 1. Yeah, look, it's 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 interesting trying to line up militarise versus V8, so to speak, um, in terms of just going through those those SPs at the English size. V8 was $4.80 on that occasion. Militarise was $21 and one on a heavy track. So uh, it's a completely different sort of setup, framing it from that point of view. V8, I know I've we've sort of talked about him so many times, I think, doing these previews and just thinking what's his actual pet distance. Well, I don't think anyone still really knows, but yeah. he just, just purely on it, on the setup, he, I agree. He looks a big price coming into this. I was, I was expecting him to be a bit shorter than the double figures you're getting. Um, so I think he, and as you, you've already stolen my thunder there with Pericles, I've been waiting for him to do something or prep. So look, I really want to see how the, are they making any sort of ground? Are they being able to win from three wide positions? so forth in the first half of this card. But um, if so, I think, as you said, Hugh Bowman's like a nice little jock booking for that horse. So I actually had the same two roughies. It's a ride, Pete, where you could see him like miss the start accidentally. All of a sudden, it's not last. It's like the second last horse on the mm. fence. And at, at 20 to 1, I don't mind that. Isn't um, the weight for age form out of the... Lady Laguna race, the, the the right form for this race. And isn't she a big price with her prep? You know, she's nearly $10 as well. She hasn't done a thing wrong. She's won the right lead up. And she seems to be big price compared to militarized. Yeah, I, look, I, I can see that angle as well. Um, I look synthetic or fill a first time. Like, I, I don't know what the, the niche camp is producing with those sort of gear changes. I haven't done the, the homework there, but... Overall, um, they're underperforming yeah. versus market expectation. They're going 12% in their last 100. Um, yeah, I just got a bit grey about them, to be honest. Well, I agree, though, like Rob, the... like the price is... The price is, and I think it'll get to a point where you're going to have to sort of chop on it if it pros well, at, at worst. It's a horse, actually, to be honest, and you know, I try and do this every show, but this is why I should buy Rob stuff. You know, you've seen it. It's deep into a prep. Rob's got a good profile on it. You know, if you stamp it, then then I'm pretty keen to, to trust your view and trust the form. Yeah, well... I'd, I'd want to read from you in the yard on the horse. Well, I might have missed, missed the birthday last week with, with Think About It because she paraded again well, big in condition. And the start before she got done by Zagotcha, not much wrong with the form at all. Mm -hmm. 
Indeed. All right. Looks a pretty interesting race, the George Ryder. Uh, we'll move on to the big one, the Golden Slipper, two-year-old, group one, 1,200 metres. <coughs> Gay and Adrian dominate the market. I think last time I looked, they had about six of the top eight favourites in the field. And um, Rob, is it Coolmore versus Coolmore here? It looks, it looks to be, um, yeah, it, it, it's, it, he's a Panther, Switzerland. He's just a little boy, but God, he's got a lovely flowing walk, you know, um, just a walk, please. Um, he, he's one of the best I've seen. Um, Storm Boy, he's, a, he's, he's, he's like the, the classic, bigger, dominant two-year-old. Like he, he looks more towards a three-year-old. I thought he paraded. Well, but with still improvement, he's got barrier to they've got Ryan Moore on who's he's searching for last I think he won the slipper last year. Mm -hmm. Um who who loves Ryan Moore in Sydney? You know, um yeah, look, he's one of the best jockeys in the world. I guess you gotta trust that. But it, he looks the one to beat. Um and I'd I'd certainly consider two dollars fifty plus. Um I thought his run the other day was, was good and I think he can improve. So Storm Boy for me. Um, the rest are sort of fighting out the placings. I think uh, you know it'll be a, possibly a Waterhouse trifecta here. Um, good chance of it. You know, with Switzerland maybe the flying the ointment there. But yeah, this is this is a much thinner race than um, some of the others on the day. I, I think you can you know have a decent crack on Storm Boy here. All right, Peter, you not so sure about. Uh... The Gay and Adrian, or, or the Coolmore, sorry, you were not sure about so much. You gave a little. Uh, look, for the most part, this just, it's not a race that I've spent a great deal of time for. I haven't been doing the, enough replays of these two-year-olds to know who's ready to peak on the day. But um, look, if, if I wanted to get really nitpicking here, um, you know. Which you do, and you're the best at it, so do it. I don't love Ryan Moore on a horse that might be leading a race. Um. You know, I know he's one of the best in the world, but some of those best jockeys in the world aren't necessarily inclined to lead. So then if he gets crossed, what happens then? Yeah, I just it just looks a little bit of a messy map up front. And I think there's quite a few horses back in the field or stalking midfield that we haven't seen the best of yet and have a little bit more to come. And just at the price of what you're getting on a favourite, I'm just more than happy to just leave the race entirely. Pistol, would you prefer Hippo on it than Ryan Moore? Yes. <laughs> no you know, horses for courses. You put the leading jockeys on a leading horse if you want to lead on it. If you don't want to lead on it, well, that, that's fine. Would but... you put Hippo or J-Mac on it? Hippo. Oh, but... come on now. I, I wish I can't wait till we have a horse in this situation and I want to just hear Peter say, no, Hippo. Yeah. All right. Well, that's fine. I think J Max should have, should have ridden and I would have put him on it. Um, the horse, yeah, I kind of feel like Peter feels that's a, it's not my go, but um, even though he's lost Peter and Rob's man, um, or she's lost Lady of Camelot, Hippo to Shin, Barrier Five. It was pretty fucking brave in the Blue Diamond. Um, it started favourite. I just hate that they've already backed it and it's eight dollars. Like if if he got out to a big price, it's probably the way I'd bet. Um oh, I thought that Storm Boy's last win was like almost its best. Like that was against horses that were going as good as they could, and I don't think he was even in out of second gear. He looked big, thick and girthy and I think if he is ridden half smart, Peter, his big, thick girthiness will protect him when he needs to sort of barge out. And and they do sort of go ballistic in these races and you, they spread and, you know, guys panic a bit earlier than they would and they, they make a run. So I think if he is coffined or something, he's going to be completely fine. And I also think Switzerland, off what Rob's saying, and the profile of the horse... Yeah, it does look the horse that's like Uncle Chris, you know, PB, Grand Final Day. Blessed to get J-Mac. Um, perfect barrier. Can't really knock it. 
Perfect. It'll be an interesting watch as always. All right, we'll move on to Mooney Valley. I have a look at a couple of races there. We'll start with race six. The Alexandra Stakes, three-year-old fillies over a mile, group three. Uh, the Kiwi comes over, certainly, right in the market there. Molly Nickers is the favourite after two-thirds of this campaign. Rob, you're still off uh, Molly Nickers. Uh, yeah, is, is that... Look, uh, I, I, I'm even more um, filthy with her because um, I was doing a bit of sick in run betting, as Jack knows I might do, and I, and I thought Molly Nickers was the other moody horse in the similar colours. The Autumn, Autumn Angel. Yeah, so I, I, I backed Molly Nickers thinking it was Autumn Angel at the 1,000-metre well, market. That's Molly's fault. I mean, that's, that's <laughs> your fault. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, uh, yeah, well, anyway... um. Well, I haven't seen her since since her spring campaign, so you know I I can't say, you know she hasn't grown or she hasn't improved. And her run the other day looked looked pretty good. I'm just quickly glancing through this field. I I, I don't know these horses, so I, I shouldn't say too much. I'll, I'll say a fair bit. I, yeah. I think she's incredibly hard to beat. Nice barrier, good strong rider. Just two forty five, two fifty. I need to think about it if I'm going to have a proper bet or not, but. If I bet into the race, uh, the horse will be Molinickers. Um, yeah. I, I hate the map, certainly. Um, I don't like the map, Vivier. I think it's too short. Um, quick star, I like a lot, but I hate the map, and I don't think the rider suits. Like Linda Meach, like half back, half wide. Um, yeah, I think this is Molinickers all, all day long. Um, the only horse on the quick backup that are back last week that scares me, but like if John Allen got off S Sox Nation and got onto um Quick Star and Meech went onto Sox Nation, I'd probably back those two. Honestly, just light it up, Linda. Turn back the clock, babe. Dig in those spurs and just let this thing rip handlebars down. I think on the quick backup, uh, Sox Nation is well placed, but it doesn't suit John. So yeah, I'm just I'm with Molly Nickers. Isn't Grinzinger Bell a big price here? Like it basically started the same price as Molly Nickers last start, three wide, no cover throughout, gets a chance to lead. Blinkers first time. Full yeah, stop. Potentially. I just thought um Molly I just thought stage of prep better. stuff. Like it's Molly Nickers is primed and but yeah, I concede that for sure. I think it's also, Pete, like a setup where because of the price they've got Molly Nickers, it can't get much shorter, I don't think. No. You just wait and see. And if it is nice and on post bias, then, then yeah, you can sort of work your battery around Grinzinger and Sox Nation. But again, Mick D's not the perfect ride rider for a, like a fast horse that just wants, needs to roll. Like if John and Mick fill up the lungs from the you know the eight hundred to the to the four hundred, and Benny Gladrap Mellums is getting through his gears, and I think it's going to kick their heads in. You know, if Declan Bates was riding Sox Nation and he's, he's he thought the finishing post was at the four hundred like he did last week, then they might just hold on and win. Wasn't that missed in the narrative of the um? Disgrace that was the way Craig was treated again. Um, post riding Mr. Brightside to a career PB there on Saturday, um, the fastest he's ever gone significantly to the 600. Oh, but he wasn't close enough. Um, what was missed in the narrative, I thought, Pistol, was how much Declan Bates owes prior to Jenny because, like, he, he went at speeds that the punters and sectionals and databases haven't ever seen before and more often than not i'd say almost 99 999 times out of a thousand that horse will go pop and it didn't and it looked like the greatest ride of all time she's just very good and they're using her assets her best assets as well as any on pace like it's just it feels like she hasn't been around for as long as she has been 
was mm. this like third trainer? Like they've just got her worked out and she is humming. Like she is proper Cox play material. Just line them up around the block and knock them off. Yeah. We had um we had Far on Far Jack on the early crow last night. He thinks that Amelia's jewels go on to the quokka. Yeah, Amelia's well she jewels is, started yeah. at dollar thirty five versus Pride to Jenny. They went real fast. No went they went like eight lengths slower than they went on Saturday. But in that good race at Mooney Valley that night and and Amelia still put her away. Like, is is she a complete nutter? Uh, I need to wait and see who's also in the field. But well, you've got King of Sparta, I think, an overpass coming over. Uh, a lot of it will come down to track Mr. conditions and stuff. Like, yeah. well, I don't know. Why? Why not? Twelve hundred. It'll be fine. I think if um. <laughs> I think Where's Giga Key? She she might be a complete nutter. And nah. he was saying there's four dollars around. I'm not getting too excited. Don't play futures. Yeah, if you see what? a man in a ponytail looking like a young Michael Hutchins just pounding the, the machines <laughs> in a tab near you, yeah, you'll know who it is. Yeah, I'll tell you what though, the way the, the stable and the, the jock are going, I wouldn't be getting too excited about four bucks. <laughs> Bang. Anyway. Um, from a New Zealand perspective, certainly don't think certainly is any superstar coming from here. It's, um, yeah, I was just having a look at that, John. You know, like the certainly seems very, very short I, considering. I was, uh, yeah, the surprised form. it's that second favourite. The, the form's like okay. I mean, it yeah. ran well in the Levin Classic, which was behind Quintessa, um, who goes who we'll talk about in a couple of races' time, but. I mean, that was a bunch finished. There was plenty there within a couple of lengths of each other. I, I, I don't think it's elite form. Um, yeah, I, I, yeah, I'd certainly be against her. Um, Rob's got Rob's got the best Savabil mare coming his way out of New Zealand soon. When's the Vinery? Uh, it'll be two. No, I'm probably next week actually. She'll, she'll be short, I assume, orchestral. Um, all right, we'll move on from that race then. Race seven uh, is the Alistair Clark uh, over the Cox Plate distance, group two, three-year-olds. Great race. Uh, I think it is Quintessa here, is it, if I'm not wrong? Uh, yeah, $3. that's right. Yep. $3.70. <clears throat> Good God. Yeah. That's interesting. It was a pretty big run. In the Australian Guineas, steps up to the two thousand for the first time by Seamus Award. Yeah, Seamus Award, Philly. Um, available now. Uh, contact Jono, Jono, J O N O at themailbag dot com dot au. Anthony and Sam Friedman train. Um, very, very good value for a Seamus Award, Philly, who's a stallion that does a phenomenal job, as you can tell by the market price of this horse here. Um, it was the uh, second best last 200 in the race last start, the 23rd fastest last 100 of the day. And um, it, it had to do a lot of work to, to do that. That was its first run in Australia. Um, no one's missed it, particularly the bookies, because 370 off a $21 SP there is is quite short. Um, whilst obviously uh, my self-interest in... Um, Getting people involved in our shame, our latest purchase, which is a, a beautiful uh, Seamus Award filly from the best producing farm probably in Australia, Mill Park, um, at Adelaide. I think she's pretty pretty short here. Mm-hmm. I mean, her dad started shorter than adjust. Um, Zip away started the same price. Uh, Snow Patrol started thirteen dollars and shorter than all of them. So, um. I think this is a great race, to be honest, but I don't think it's a phenomenal betting race. If I had to have a bet, gun to my head now, it's probably Vaselina, Peter, or Verdad, just at the prices, but I still think they're tight enough as they are. So um, I might hand it over to you, my man. Yeah, I, I didn't really have too much more to add. I thought of the current market, Verdad was possibly the, the slide overs it's just got that real good sort of track and distance figure from last prep and you know look um it wasn't exactly in the best part of the track there last start um was difficult to win off the rail there at flemington um but you know 
you should be able to settle on speed from gate seven and and find a spot somewhere. It's just a bit of a messy race behind that. There's a lot of horses that are going to be settling midfield or worse and then uh, might need to change their tactics. I thought zip away blinkers coming off was interesting, but uh, I thought the map maps to improve from gate one, um, there was a little bit of a conversation during the week. Steve Parnham's elected to ride some of the, the horses at home um, just on track to the derby. So Declan Bates jumps on. So I, look, I actually don't think that's a, a bad jockey booking at all. I think he will probably suit the horses. Just the blinkers off is a little bit strange. Oh, mate, but Anyone would suit the horse after what Chris did to it or Stephen did to it last time. He, Jesus <laughs> Christ. So I, I thought those were the, probably the two at the current prices where you could make a case and – they may very well shorten a little bit. It's just a tough race, really, this one. But that's now, you know, that's the story for Saturday. There's a lot of tough races out there. Big fields and um tricky maps is is definitely a theme at uh, Mooney Valley. I do think the other thing in Verdad's favour, boys, is two of his better runs that sort of put him on the map and, and have created his SP profile in a way are runs at Mooney Valley, which is a tactical um and a different track, and he's obviously let down really nicely both times. So, um, yeah, I think if I had to have a bet, which you don't, gamble responsibly, 1-800-858-858, visit the website or call the number. Um, I'd be backing Verdad. All right, perfect. Uh, we've gone through two races and said that uh, Opie Bosson favourites, Tiaka, can't win. Uh, <laughs> now we move on to race eight. Uh, with what you'd expect to be their best chance of the day. The William Reed 1200 Group 1 Wait for Age Imperatriz I speak of returns to the Valley. Jack, pre-show, you said something. I think she's going to get beat. I hate the map. Um, I'm worried about the horses coming out of that um, new market because they went fucking ballistic. Um, she's on a two week turnaround from that, not a three week turnaround from that. Um, she's in much better at the weights, but she's just got like Barrier Nine, Opie Bossom, Mooney Valley. This isn't this race, isn't just hidden gig kick, and she just can do whatever she wants and circle them three or four or five wide. She could be six or seven wide, or they let her roll across and leave, which I fucking highly, highly doubt. Um, there's proper speed here from speed horses. The astrologist, Q Man, hypothetical, IME. Um, they're gonna kick. Bella Nipatina's not gonna want to be behind her and run. Queen of the Ball can sit in front of us. Cylinder will kick up from one. I think she's gonna be back with Johnny Rocker in the Inferno. And I wanna see proper evidence that they're running on before I took that sort of price about this mare in this race. I'd I'd I'm not saying I'm gonna lay her at the same time. Peter, I think she's probably like a 220 chance here. Um, maybe 210 even, which is not a big enough edge for me to want to lay the horse. Um, I think you could... I think I probably will, and I'll probably do it before this is posted. Take a position on hypothetical. He's $26, which just seems large to me, Pete. The map, the form, um, he's tough. He's like, fuck, how he didn't beat Q Man last start. I'll never get over that. <laughs> um, but now I'm getting an even bigger price. Just of his SPs, sort of, uh, I think we need to have something on him as a start. And if it is nice and on pace, well, then I, I'm going to be in a great position because he'll start closer to $10. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's the one that looks like the place bet, doesn't he? Or, you know, like heavier the place something on the wind, you're getting the, the opportunity to bet there. I, I can't add anything more. It's uh, it's an interesting race. I, I don't really think it's a great betting race outside of maybe that small play on hypothetical. That's really the one that gets the map and has the figures on the board. And as you said, the form looks to be stacking up pretty well. But, uh, you know, there's probably three or four horses that could win and I wouldn't be too surprised. It's just the odds are very razor thin there for the fave. You could almost I'll, lay a cylinder. I like the Blightly fact that... blessed in run last start. Going to be fucking back and buried here. I like the fact that um, hypotheticals not right, not coming out of the new market on that hot day. Um, mm. Might be a little bit fresher. Uh, at least 
half of the the them will run poorly, I reckon. So I yeah. think yeah, Imperatress is a little bit of a risk, you know, with that huge weight. I think she had some sort of issue as well after the race. Um, she's obviously the one to beat, and I also quite I don't mind the you know this IME. I think it's pretty much unbeaten, fresh, and um, I know there's going to be a lot of speed here, but yeah, she she looks like she you know she's another sort of decent place chance. I think. I really wanted to find the Inferno, but trial was playing. I thought um... he he also seems like a Mooney Valley horse. That one, you know, I, grows a leg at Mooney Valley. Fucking Johnny Rockers out of five dollars versus Midtown Boss last start. I mean, that'd be one of the great training performances of all time. Bella Nipatina, if the rain comes, Pete, maybe it's a like it loves Mooney Valley. Yeah, there's nothing forecast, unfortunately, yeah. for for Bella. Yeah. Mind you, we kept saying that last prep, and she kept winning on or mm. performing well on good tracks. So probably a bit more versatile than what yeah, was like once if, you, if you're looking for a play, probably to lay cylinder, win and place. Never seen Mooney Valley. Big drifter last start, blessed in run. Average it's average SP. This prep's fourteen dollars. Loses J car. Loses car. Bo Merton's good young rider will be one of the. Best riders in Victoria, I think, in five years. But he's Jay, the the most informed Jay Carr of all times, getting off, you know, mm. to a rider returning from a break. So step back. All right, some tricky races there at uh, Mooney Valley and Rose Hill. We'll move on to our best bets. Uh, if you've got one available, speak up. Yes, I do. Race five at Mooney Valley. Uh, actually, there was one at odds. I thought we didn't talk about the race, but at Rose Hill, I thought Remark was a big price in race nine. Again, another one of those horses that was just rails and run in a horrible position like first up. Um, and interesting that the stable typically he's been one of those horses that peaks massively first up and then just squibs his way to the line for his subsequent starts. Well, he hasn't done that first up this time. He sort of looks like he's got a much better platform to work off than just coming out posting a massive PB. So uh, 23 bucks and remark race nine Rose Hill. I thought you could do a lot worse if you're wanting to find one each way, but that's not my best. My best is race five at the Valley. Wish or wish law less. I think you might've had that once before. Oh, I did. Oh, you did. Yeah. Okay. Oh, bled. Oh, something happened. Got, got galloped on. Yeah. I know it was, Possibly a little bit plain first up, but she seems to go a lot better second up. First up, she seems a little little iffy throughout her, her uh, career so far. I thought that figure was actually pretty decent. Maps to lead, B Melamon, tick, tick. That will do $4.80 or so. All righty. Um, $4.80 is what you'll get, yeah. Anyone else? Ro um, Jack or Rob? Got one ready. Mooney Valley race two, number five, Growing Empire. Race two, number five, Growing Empire, 440, Ethan Brown. Lock it in, Chop King Jr., get it done. Yeah, I like that. I like that bet. Roberto? Uh, I was just tossing out whether to go for, you know, the, the three-pointer or... um. <laughs> Listen, my man. It's layup time. It's the start of the new year. All right. All right layout start time. of the new year. We'll find fairways. All right. Well, we'll go for the the classic better two year old Storm Boy um, to win the Golden Slipper from likely a, the the right gate, as Jack says, muscle out on the corner and just be too good. The big strong boy. Son of right. justify. Two forty available there. So that we can have Storm Boy. Two forty, and I will go. Race one at Tower. <laughs> Every time I say Tower Ronga. Race one. I'll just wait for you to say something. Uh, how, long he, how long until he jumps over the ditch, do you reckon? It's coming, I reckon. He's going to go. You, you keep suggesting it. I'm having one at Rose Hill this week. Oh, you mean for the bets or actual move in there? No, I meant for the bets. No, for the bets. <laughs> um, race two, number uh, race, race, race one, one number two. You say Dorsey, uh, little small field, three-year-old, 1,400, uh, won its first two before being narrowly knocked off by, I think, what is a good one. Um, 
and has form around my little filly. So uh, that's 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 the elite he's in on form. Um, and I think we've got um, four forty. I think was available for me. Um, Rob, are you checking these because he could be signing anything? Well, no. I'll, I'll, I'll have to double check. I'm waiting, I'm waiting to get a winner before I check. <laughs> yeah, that's fair enough. Um, um go on, mate. No, no, you go. Oh, I was just going to say, if anyone interested in the three-point shot, it was um, in race three, number one, the last of file. I think um, she, you know she's really suited at the weights. So she could only improve in condition, and um, it seems you know this nineteen hundred suits her more than a lot of them. So yeah, that was my um, long shot at ten dollars. A little little bonus bet there. Uh, three seventy was my bet. Sorry, looks well, like. See what I'm saying, Rob? You tried to sneak in next well, seventy cents. Yeah. Okay. New Zealand tab do things differently. Yeah. Exactly. You're lucky. Like no deductions. Um, all right. That'll probably do us in. I think that's everything. Jack, you got have a phenomenal dad? weekend, guys. Like, gamble responsibly. Have fun. It's a phenomenal, it's just a great weekend of sport. It's happening tonight. It kicks off tonight. The rugby league, they're racing it. I think Packenham or Cranbourne. Enjoy yourselves. Bet within your limits. And if you want to race a horse with the best possible owner communication you've ever seen, with an array of trainers that are all sorts of price points, J-O-N-O at themailbag.com.au. Uh, we've done the work. We've found sound, strong, exciting prospects to race all across Australia's eastern seaboard. Uh, Jono, J-O-N-O at themailbag.com.au. And don't forget, like I said, these two-year-olds, you can have them one week, you lost them the next. They're still going to run them in the slipper. You need eyes on ponies. You need Rob Scurry's eyes on your on the ponies. You need him to whisper to them. They whisper back. He sends it to you via the app. Themailbag.com.au. Get involved. Get the double set. That's what I like to do. I like to bet Rob stuff. And then while I'm putting the kids to bed, having a beer dinner, might have a bath, got the footy on. Hang on, shit. They've got to stop because Peter's has had another bet. Pistols, Rob's, buy the sets. Get involved. Bet responsibly. Have a great weekend. And bye for now.